This is the research methods uh, 12 marker that was on the mock paper. So it says, very friends, some research suggests that animals can help make people feel less lonely. To investigate this further, a psychologist wants to conduct an experiment to study the effect of caring for pets on elderly people living in one large residential hall called the Auckland's, which has a total of 125 men and women aged between 60 and 95. So the question asks, as usual, explain how you would use an experimental method to conduct this research. Well, not as usual, because sometimes it might say observation or correlation or whatever, but this one wants an experiment. Justify your decisions as part of your explanation. In your answer, the required features that you must refer to are the experimental design you would use, how the dependent variable will be measured, and the control of at least one extraneous variable. And it says you should use your own experience of practical activities to inform your response. So what I've done is I've wrote an answer, which I'll talk through uh, in just a second, and I've highlighted it so that you can see where um you get in the mark so basically every time you mention one of these and you mention it in a way that shows that you understand what it means that is called addressing which if you look on the mark scheme it says addressing on it uh, the application is when you explain how you would do it in this scenario so it's got to be in context your justification is why you are actually doing it so what is the strength of doing it why you decided to do it and then your link to your own research is some research that you've done previously which has informed your decision of why you decided to pick it so if we have a look at the first point here this is about which design you'll use so i've decided to use a match pairs design and i've said here as it's like that the iv of whether a resident at Auckland has a pet will be naturally occurring well, that's supposed to be naturally occurring and therefore will take part in one condition of the IV. So there quite clearly I've shown that I understand that if you've got a match pairs design that they only take part in one condition of the IV. And I've mentioned Auckland's and I've mentioned the pet so it's in context. Then comes the justification. So it says this design controls for things such as demand characteristics and order effects, as the elderly residents, so there's context there, will not be able to guess what that whether a pet affects loneliness is being investigated. So again, I've put in what it's about there for context, as they only take part in one condition of the IV. So again, I've kind of repeated what I've got up there just to clarify that I know what a match purge design is and I'm justifying why I've used it. So they won't change their answers to please or Please the researcher or get bored or fatigued by the second condition. Now I've put a link in here. So in my own research on the effect of physical coordination on memory, so I've done a completely different experiment, but I'm you know finding out from that experiment the point that I'm making here. So when participants memorized a word list by catching a ball and then without catching a ball in a repeated measures design, their performance was affected in the second condition by order effects and therefore were invalid. Thus, by using a match pairs design, so again, more justification here, in this study, results about how a pet affects a resident's loneliness should be more valid because they're only taking part in one of those conditions of the IV. So I've already mentioned that, so that's already in there. So this design also controls for individual differences. Now, the point before is kind of what you would say for an independent measures design. Now, we're talking about a match pair, so it needs that little bit of extra justification on there of why you've chosen the match pairs rather than an independent measures design. So here it says that it controls for individual differences as the participants are matched on one variable, such as age and the type of pet. So again, it's in context there. So these won't obscure the effect of the IV. Now you could, if you wanted to make it a really, really good answer, go into more detail about that, but I'm very concerned that you've not got a lot of time to write this, you've got 12 minutes. So this is kind of like the bare bones of what you need. This will get you most marks. But if you're looking for an A grade or an A star answer, you might want to put more stuff in. So for example, where it says such as age, you might put for example, I would match 50 year olds that have a pet with 50 year olds that don't have a pet and then compare them on their loneliness scores. So you can go into more detail to give it that more kind of context, that A star kind of answer. Now the dependent variable in this study will be a score out of 10 on a rated scale with one being very lonely and 10 being not very lonely at all. So right there I address how I'm going to actually measure loneliness, which is the DV in this study. Now if you've got the question, previously wrong about what the DV was, then you'd probably find it very difficult to do this question, which is why it's very important that you know the difference between an IV and a DV and you know properly how to operationalise them. So all the questions tend to kind of build on each other. And my justification for this is that it will produce quantitative data. So therefore it's easy to analyse its objective numerical data and will be less likely to be influenced by researcher bias. Then I've got 
a link to my own research. In my own research, I conducted a questionnaire, so something completely different than the last one, on whether students felt stressed during exam time, and this produced qualitative data which was very descriptive and difficult to analyse and interpret and interpret, and therefore led to less reliable results as if someone had analysed it. Someone else analysed it, it would likely that they get a different interpretation. So this is why it's reliability because it's different each time or less reliable, shall we say. So therefore, using quantitative data in this study will lead to more valid results on whether having a pet affects a resident's loneliness. So I've brought the context in there at the end. And then my final point is to control for extraneous variables, I would make sure that the question that I'm asking about, you know, whether they feel lonely or not, is printed on paper in the same font size, um, same, sorry, same font, same size, same colour, to ensure that this did not affect the resident's ratings of their loneliness. Again, it's in context. In my own research, that's the wrong colour, isn't it? That there should be in turquoise, and that should be in green. I said in my own research on whether the colours of the ink of words, so again, another completely different experiment that I've done, affects memory. The print out we used was slightly different sizes as we had hand brought them. This meant that participants remember certain words more than others and therefore invalidated our results and wasn't because of the colour of the ink but other factors. Therefore, in this experiment, I will ensure that it is typed so that causality can be established between having a pet and the resident's rating of loneliness. So basically, that there gets you all of the kind of marks because you've addressed all the three points, you have um, applied them to this scenario, so you've explained how they're going to be done in this situation, in the... Um, the stem that's up there you've justified why so you've explained it with terminology such as um you know validity reliability and i've on order effects i've kind of used different points for each thing um, and then also mentioned the the uh, links to your own research so there's a clear like demonstration there that you've done research before you know the kind of problems that have happened and you know how to address those and get around those so that there would get you you know all the marks for this question at AS. If you're an A2 student, you know, you do need to go into a bit more detail, um, you know, such as my point before about putting this in a bit more context, similarly for the other two as well. You know, you could be mentioning things such as a sample, um, if you need to, to mention like how many are going to go in which IV, um, but that's if you've got time, because if you start doing that stuff, you're not going to get marks for that stuff, so you kind of put that in as an additional if you kind of want to get that top band answer. So hopefully that's been helpful and you know you know kind of how you really should be answering it. Please have another go at it based on you know watching this video and then check this video again to see is yours similar to what we've written here. Maybe use a different design, justify it in a different way, use your own research in a different way. Do make another suggestion for how you've measured the credit variable, it's not this one. Mention another extraneous variable. See if you can do the same thing but with, with other stuff. And then that will really test whether you've got the capability of answering this question.